lunch, remember your breakfast, remember your plugs, and don't forget to bring your glasses if you need them. This is another craft that we could make. It's called a student's dumb college. It's a practice, a practice SAT. So the idea is if you're in the ninth grade or you're in the tenth grade, you're the ACT is ticket to college. Time test, wear a watch. Here are my glasses. So let's say that I'm joining us today on homemade math. Welcome to Homemade Math, the ACT edition. I'm Judy Conrad, your host, and with me today is our co-host, Natalie Feast, who's in charge of math for kindergarten through the 12th grade of Fayette County Public Schools. Natalie, so good to see you. Glad to have you with us today. And put these dates on your calendar, March 8th, 9th, and 10th. And right now, that's the dates for the ACT. Natalie, parents and students are both aware of the test, but what exactly is the ACT? The ACT is the American College Test. And what we say to kids is it's your ticket to college. Just as you have a ticket to go to the movies or you have a ticket to go to a ball game, it's like an entrance sign that says, enter here. It's one of the first steps in going to college. And who can take the ACT? Is it only for juniors? There, this year for the state of Kentucky, during the second week in March, there are dates that every junior, every junior in the state of Kentucky will be taking the ACT. In Fayette County Public Schools, in addition to juniors, our sophomores will be taking the ACT. So a lot of kids during the second week of March, put that on your calendar, homemade math, that will be taking the ACT. Well, now, are there any changes this year because of COVID? Uh, because after all, we know that, uh, you know, it might be, is the test any different than when parents took it or is it the same test or what? The big change with ACT due to COVID protocols is that now students can take the ACT on a computer on their Chromebook at a school or students can take that pencil and paper. It's up to the school to decide. The state of Kentucky says you can decide for school to decide whether that will be a test on a computer or a test pencil paper. What about uh, the fact we talked about a window and I I think we've got a hint of what that window is. What do we mean by the window for the ACT this year? That's a new, this is a new COVID change, Judy. I just thought about that. That's a new change because in the past, you'll remember, and on one day at the same time, every student took the ACT in Fayette County at the same time. But this year it's different because of COVID. What the state realized and ACT realized is we probably do not need a thousand kids in the gym all crunched in there together. So instead, there is a window. So sometime either March 8th, March 9th, or March 10th, our schools will decide when it's safe for those kids to take the ACT in a socially distant setting. So that's why it's so important for parents and for kids to say to their teachers and look on the websites and call the counselors and say, when will we be taking the ACT at our school? And what exactly does this particular math test cover? The math test on the ACT has 60 questions that we actually take in 60 minutes. The test is composed of multiple choice items. That's good to know. So of those 60 items, they're all multiple choice. When you look at the test, there's actually five answer choices for math questions. That's different than the other areas of the ACT. Mm -hmm. So there's A, B, C, D, E. So multiple choice test, five options for, for students to answer. The questions pretty much go from those that are least difficult to most difficult. And so there's going to be word problems and, and those that are, that, are not as complicated, that are not as complex. So towards the beginning of the test, we know that those are going to be lots of pre-algebra and algebra related questions, about 40%. Mm -hmm. The second part of the test has geometry, coordinate geometry questions, about 40%. There's about 15% of the ACT that focuses on those skills in Algebra 2, and then there's four questions, questions that are pre-calculus in nature that have to do with trigonometry, for example. Well, now, for instance, if, you know, the early part of the test, it kind of graduates up with, uh, with the skill level. So can I do them, if the, do I have to put everything on the paper, or can I do some in my head, or what do you, what do, you do in that situation? Some of the easier questions, how do I handle that if I'm a student? What kids know about the ACT is it's a time test. Kids hardly finish. It, 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 like you think, oh, I get 60 minutes to do 60 questions. No way. Like you have to work very quickly to get through the test. If you don't finish the test, you do need to guess. And so kids are very 
strategic about choosing the same answer. But whenever we're, when we're doing the test at the very beginning, you want to go quickly. Mm -hmm. So doing questions in your head, that's smart, but you want to be careful when you do that. So for example, I brought us a typical question that was a released item. It's a question that kids would probably do in their head. What rational number is halfway between one-fifth and one-third? You might think, look at that, that it would be one-fourth. That's a common error because when you actually put that in your calculator, the answer was D. So sometimes you do the question in your head because you're going mm -hmm. quickly. But let's use the cal your calculator is your friend. So use the calculator, use pencil paper, use your notes to make sure that what you're doing quickly in your head, which is a great skill, but make sure those answers are correct when okay. we choose them. Now, do they provide you with a formula sheet or, or do you, you know, or, or provide formulas that are needed to help solve a problem or are you pretty much on your own? This is important for kids and parents to know and for teachers to know. No formulas are provided for the ACT on the math section. You have to memorize. So this was a formula sheet that I did for my own boys. We've taken the ACT for the past seven years. There's approximately 75 different formulas that could be on the test. So a great strategy immediately is to realize there are no formulas on, provided. So we have to memorize those. So let's go back to things we learned in middle school, algebra one, geometry. And remember, there's approximately 10 area formulas. There are six formulas with volume, some of interior angles of a polygon distance formula, midpoint formula, Pythagorean theorem. I mean, there are so many different formulas. Let's practice those. That's a great reminder. Why is the math score so crucial? We get this question all the time, but you know, it bears repeating. Why is it so crucial for parents and students? When you go, when you go to college, you actually send two scores to colleges. You send your composite which is an overall score, that's a composite, you send the composite, and then you also send your math score. So when you send scores to colleges, two scores get sent. The composite overall, which might be a, might be a super score, and your math score. Now, with COVID, there's some schools that advertise the AC2 scores are test optional, and you know, but you, even if you don't submit all the scores, you've got to get your math scores in there. So what are we talking about when we mean test optional? What's the math connection there? So that's something new with COVID as well, is test optional. We never had test no. optional. But if you think back to 2020, 2021, ACT went through a time that we, they, were not giving, they were not giving tests. For example, no. my son went through a great, a great, the class of 21 had a hard time getting that ACT in. So colleges had to react and say, we're now, we're now score optional. So you can be accepted at a college without an ACT score, but listen, this is where we're just shouting up and down. You can submit scores. You need to submit your math score. Otherwise, you've got to take a placement exam. So I went to EKU, for example, advertises their test optional, but they're on the web page. When you first log on to go to EKU, there's a big asterisk that says, you must submit scores or you're gonna have a placement exam whenever you come here to take, to take classes. Same for BCTC, I went to their website. They say, well, if you do not have an ACT math score, then we're gonna have you either maybe take the Coyote, you're gonna have to take an Ed Ready Diagnostic. Same for EKU, they have different tests that you have to go and take. A math test, why would we do that? Let's do so great on this ACT right now that score will be submitted and then you're ready to take a college bearing, a credit bearing college class. What is a target math score? Because this score, this test math test is not based on 100 points. So we need to make everybody aware of that. But what's a target math score? This is really good for kids to know. You do not have to score a perfect score to do well on the ACT. A perfect score would be a 36. Remember we talked about this, Judy, at the beginning. Right. There are 60 items that you take in 60 minutes. So if you get all 60 items correct, then you score 36. That's very rare. Our target score, this is what you were referring to, mm -hmm. is a 22. Look at this. Uh, this is so great for kids and parents. You only have to get 34 items correct out of 60 to meet benchmark. And that means that you can take a college class and get credit for it. You don't have to take remedial classes. We do not want to take remedial. 
Another good target score is 19. You only have to have 27 out of 60 correct. So th that takes pressure off right there, and, finding those that... And since it's, uh, you know, it's based on a 60 out of 60 and you only need What's the time frame with this? Because it's, I think it's important for our, our friends to understand that might help them in studying what's the time allotment for the math section. Some, think, some people may think, you know, there's 60 items and 60 minutes. Maybe we need to do one minute per question. No, do not do that. So one strategy with the ACT is that you do not take one minute per question. Instead, you try to do so many questions quickly at the beginning. So maybe you want to do the first 30 questions in 22 minutes. When you practice, you'll learn how to recognize different questions and answer those very quickly. So that at the end of the test, maybe there might be test questions related to conics, or there might be some questions that have multiple steps. You have more time. You can spend three or four minutes on that question, but you want to go quickly at the beginning. It's a time test, and that's important. And you've given us a good foundation for that, but how else would be a good idea to answer the math questions in your opinion? Oh, when you answer the math questions, there are strategies. If you know the answer to the math question, like you see the question up there and you know how to solve that, then grab your pencil and paper and you start working that and then look back. Remember we said there are multiple choice questions. The answer is there. You just have to find the answer. If you know how to work the problem, work it and then look back and find the answer. But if you're not sure how to work the problem, the answer is provided. Choose one. I recommend you choose that third answer and let's substitute that back into the problem. Then if it works, great, that was the answer. And if it was too high, then you know the answer was A or B. And if it's too low, you know it's C or D because here's another hint on the ACT. For the math questions, there are five items that are, that are always there for selection for answer and they go from least to greatest. So they're always ranked in order from least to greatest. So when you choose that third to substitute in there, that third answer option, that's a great strategy to answer the test questions. Can you skip a question in the math section? You never, okay, so can you skip a question? You never want to leave an item blank. You never want to leave one blank. You answer, there's no penalty for guessing, so answer every question. But if you know that there's a question that you do not know how to do, it, it has to do with trig functions, and you didn't remember SOHCAHTOA, skip it. You can make a little note, you can say number 17, I need to go back and check that, but make a best guess and then move on. Don't spend a lot of time on a question that you don't know how to answer because the next one or maybe five down, you'll know how to do those. How long should you spend on a question in your opinion? You know, that really depends on the question because some questions you might have a stem and they might have five different questions that go back up and refer to that graph. And then other times it might just say, hey, put these fractions in order from least to greatest. So it really does depend. What are some of the errors that math students could make that maybe we can give them some suggestions to that they might avoid? The greatest error on when kids take the math test is that they don't answer the question. So your finger is your the trace up there on the computer screen or trace in your booklet, find the question. I brought one that off of a test booklet that I had just practiced with, and it said, like, the kids might think there's, there, there's given two equations, and they might solve for x. But look here, it says, solve, what is x, y? And down here, it said, I need the, I need the answer in ascending order. So you have, so they may know the answer, but it wasn't printed the correct way. So you have to read the question. The most common error is to not answer the question, because sometimes they trick you up. Here's another example. There's a graph, and the graph may be represented in centimeters, but that question will say, what is the answer in meters? So make sure to answer the question at all times. So basically, be careful when you read the question. Answer the question carefully. Yes. Um, can you use a calculator on the math test? Okay, this is where the ACT, they're very, they're very open about this. They advertise it. They have blinking lights that say not only can you use a calculator? You must use a calculator. So, and you must have your own. That's a new COVID protocol. Every student has to have their own handheld. So there are calculators that are allowed. Any calculator that we use at school, that's a legal calculator. For parents at home for homemade math, 
your child's going to need a calculator. They know which ones they love. Some kids love their fraction calculator and they want to bring that. They're about $20 and parents buy fraction calculators for mm -hmm. their kids. But teachers have calculators you may borrow. Librarians have calculators you can borrow. I'll be honest, we do not have enough calculators for every child to have their own. So bringing yours from home, super important, but now you should, must have a calculator. Should they check on the calculator that they can get before the ACT though? Don't wait till you get to the room to assume they're gonna be in there, right? Absolutely. You need so to check know that, that ahead of time. you've got to check that out ahead of time. Make sure the calculator you have to take the ACT with is one you're comfortable with. You know where the square root key is. You know where the probability key is, that you know your calculator. If a teacher brings you a calculator, let's say you go to sit down and you don't have one, you're like, excuse me, I need a calculator at the very last second. They may bring you one that you're not used to using, and that's not going to be of great help. You want a calculator that you're used to using. So if you can bring one or borrow one with you on test day, super important. And don't forget extra batteries, right? Don't assume, always bring an extra set of batteries for your calculator because you can't get up and leave the room and no. correct. So you wanna bring an extra set of calculators. Make sure, I'm not kidding. Batteries, not calculators. Bring an extra set of, or you might wanna bring an extra set of calculator too. But bring an extra set of batteries. Well, if they do have two calculators at home, I could bring one for my friend. You know, yeah, that, that's a great strategy. A so idea. that would be that would be very helpful. Now, I've heard some people say you don't need a handheld calculator if you're taking the ACT online, that there's 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 ways you can get help with that. Something called Desmos. Can you explain what Desmos is for us? Okay, so this is this is something new, and it's a terrible misconception because some people have said, oh, if you're taking the ACT on your Chromebook, just use the calculator on your Chromebook. There is a calculator on the ACT, but perhaps you're not used to using that calculator and it does take time to find the calculator and then you have to pull up on the computer the Desmos calculator, which may or may not be the same one that you're used to using. It might be a scientific, it might be, and you're looking for keys. We don't have time for that. So the ACT company says we give AXO, if you're a sophomore and you're gonna take the ACT on your computer, you still have your handheld calculator because it's a time test, fast. You're reading the question on the screen. You're typing at the other hand, you're writing. It's fast, you gotta to work together all the time. So you must have a handheld, no matter if you're taking the ACT on the computer or pencil paper. As we walk over to our next segment, I wanna ask, let me ask you another question about what raises a math score and uh, you know, what, how, how can they, tips for parents to help them raise that math score? Sure. So the question is, what raises a math score? And are there specific tips? Absolutely, there are tips for raising a math score. And one of those is that we need to take a practice test. And there are books that have practice tests, and there's practice tests online that we can, that we can do with, with our children at home that they can do themselves. What we know is this, two questions correct raises an ACT math score one point. Okay, so let's say that again. If you get two additional test questions correct, then your score will go up one point. That, that's huge. That's really important. It really is. Now remember, you can take the ACT again. So if you take the ACT a second time, 60% of the kids raise their score. But if you're trying to raise your score, you want to take a practice test. Take a practice test. I found these when I went, you go to the counseling office and they'll give you a practice test. I walked into the Lafayette counseling office last week, literally walked in the door and right there on the left-hand side, there was a big stack of these and I grabbed one. They're free. Raising your score, remember the ACT is money. It's money to go to college. They add that money to your keys account. They say, Judy, you scored a 26. This money, this is gonna go for your books for college. So ACT is money. When you practice, you can practice with books that you can borrow from your library. You can buy them at half price books. To improve a score, you need to take a test. So inside that test booklet, this is the book I got from my counselor, but you can get one from your counselor or you can print them online on the ACT website. To improve a score, take a practice test. So you can see this is where I had my son go through and he wrote out his choices. In the back of these test booklets, guess what? The answers are there. How you improve your test score is find out what you don't know how to do and learn how to do it. If you say, Ms. Feast, it's just too much to work all that out. I don't have time. Look what else I did just last night before we were getting ready to take today. 
I went through the test and every time I saw, remember, a test question that had to do with math, I didn't solve it, but I wrote down what did that have to do with. Well, it had to do with matrix addition. It had to do with mean. It had to do with median. They weren't in order when we had to do the median. It had to do with percent increase. I wrote those down because now guess what I'm going to do? When I can't remember the formula for surface area of a rectangular prism, I'm going to go back and learn it. Isn't that good? No, so absolutely answer. practice to and raise the, your score. A lot of these books are really available. You can find them in you know, not just bookstores, but friends have them or check out and get, get one of these and look at it. You've got time. The test is until March. Now's the time to be doing this. Now, what do we want to do on test day? Because it's very important. We got to start with the first thing in the morning. And for those who may not like breakfast, let's talk about that first because it's extremely important. Well, we brought food just to remind our parents because this is homemade math and parents will say, Judy, Natalie, what can I do to help exactly. my child? On ACT day, remember it's going to be in that second week in March, that, that testing window, we're going to find out from our school our exact date. Eat breakfast. Judy, what you said, some kids will be like, I'm too cool for breakfast, Miss Fee's like, I don't have breakfast. I don't need breakfast. I'm not hungry. Why is breakfast so important, Natalie? Tell them how long the test is. You've got over 200 items in over three and a half hours. It's a four hour it's battery. A four hour battery. If you don't, you need, even if you normally don't eat breakfast, and while well, we've got some great things to share up here, if you don't have the conventional breakfast, eat something. I did, I brought, remember, I mean, it's something as simple as making those little packets of oatmeal, that'll stick with you. I got applesauce in a cup, even if it's a Nutri-Grain bars, or maybe parents will be like, I can make muffins that day, baking it, whatever it happens to be, eat breakfast that morning. So well, on the way to school, make sure, oh, we get to school early right. on that test day and have a great breakfast. Now, on the day of the test, what can I bring? What can I not bring? Okay. What to bring on test day. Number one, you must bring your thinking cap. Very important. And number two, confidence. So between that thinking cap and your confidence, we're ready to go. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to bring a watch. So I have a little clock here because we're going to bring a watch. This is a time test. You have to pace yourself. Wearing a watch, super important on test day. Oh, here's a good one, Judy. If you're a contact person, you may want to wear glasses on test day because of that eye strain. Yep. So bring your glasses to school. And uh, Judy, you're wearing your glasses, but on that test day, if you're a test wear, if you wear glasses, you definitely want to bring your glasses to school. You already mentioned bringing batteries. Oh, extra batteries, yep. Some calculators are like iPhones or your phone, and you have to plug those calculators in. Parents at home, what can we do for homemade math? Charge those calculators if that's it. Also, parents, we need writing utensils, so please buy a pencil. Maybe, I know that my kids like click erasers, and so like you can erase with those faster. So I love a good click eraser, but please buy pencils. We don't want to come to school that day and be like, who has a pencil? No, no, no prepared. We're going to eat breakfast. We're going to have pencils. We're going to have our thinking cap. We're going to wear our glasses. We're going to have our calculator and our batteries. And we need to talk about the cell phone because this is very important for this generation particularly. So okay. this is tough. This is tough for parents to know too. We don't bring, a, we don't bring the iPhone. <coughs> we don't bring an iPhone on test day. That's not in your baggie. So here's the baggie that, that my son took last year. It had his calculators, his pencil, and I put a peppermint in there. So just for what you take on test day, that we're ready to rock and roll. So not bringing, a, we, then the kids have to turn off their iPhone. So this is important for parents to remember as well. Don't, we're not gonna call parents in the middle of the test or you can't call your child and say, how's it going? You can't do that. So no phones on test day. Now you, oh, you, you've started answering this already, but how else can we help? Can you study ahead of time for the ACT and you kind of address that? Any other tips on that? But here's the thing. You must study, and that's what we want to say to our kids. We must study. We must study. So maybe, Judy, you might want to have like a little pizza party on a Sunday night and say, bring a friend over. Encourage your child to study. Here's something uh, most people don't say like, oh, I want to go study for the ACT. No. But maybe a parent might want to sit down with a child as well and just have fun and say, show me how this ACT website works. Show me how to work these problems. 
and do it together. Every little bit counts. You must study. We've got to review those formulas. Study with a friend. What's the best test press prep for the ACT? I think that depends on who you are. Kids know that sometimes I like to study Ms. Feast on the computer. Sometimes I just want to sit in quiet and I want to go through a study booklet and just look myself and see what I've forgotten so that I can ask my math teacher for help. I think it depends on a lot of kids like to switch it up. Is the ACT a one-time only test? That's really important for kids and I think that takes away anxiety because if you know that no, it's not a one-time test. It's only free. I think the confusion is, is because it's only free that one time from the state legislators. So the state legislators say, we're going to pay for all juniors. And then Fayette County says, well, we're going to pay for sophomores too. But you can pay and take the ACT. And I highly recommend that parents go ahead and do that right now. Let's not wait. Let's go ahead and sign up to register to take the ACT one more time or more. You and can we, take it. We also times. want to take the time and the motion to thank the uh, state legislatures of Kentucky who fund this for all eligible juniors every year. Let your legislator know this is a good thing they're doing. And we thank the Fayette County School Board, which pays to have sophomores. Let them know you appreciate this because this really helps a lot. It does. Okay, um, can a parent purchase a copy of the ACT test? Or this is know? really important for our families. Pay. Yes, you are allowed to, if you pay to take the ACT. So remember, we're not going to know our scores when we take the test in March. We're not going to know our scores yet. So go ahead right now and sign up to take the ACT one more time. Or you can take it up to 12 times, so you can sign up to take it again. In doing so, it does cost money. The first time ever, we're getting it for free. But you can even take the test if you're in the fifth grade or the seventh grade or you're an adult. To take the test costs $62, $63, around $60. But guess what? This is what I'm telling you today. This is the bargain. For an additional $30, when you pay for the ACT for, the, for June, for April, for July, you pay 30 additional dollars and they give you back the ACT test that you take. They give you your answers, they give you the correct answers, and you get it in the mail, and it comes to your house, and then you're gonna know what questions there were and what you answered correctly and not, and it really helps you study the take again. So when you pay to take the ACT, you can do that. Also, some families might be saying, Ms. Feast, you know, we're really struggling with money, there are waivers available from your counseling office. So if a student wants to go to their counselor and ask for a waiver, for example, students with free and reduced lunch can have the opportunity to get a waiver and they do not have to pay. When they go to register, they type in that waiver number. Now, does the ACT change every year? The format of the test does not change, but the test items change every time. What about if my student does, you know, we've talked about, of course, you can take it more times. What if my student doesn't do well? How do I handle that? With them? We're going to have kids come home from school and they're going to be like, okay, that, I blew that one. That's, that was a, or if you're a sophomore year and you're taking it just to practice, isn't that good? Pay to take it again. It's well worth the money. Pay to take it again. When you do pay to take it, you're going to get an admission ticket. This is a little different. So you'll pay to take it. You'll get an admission ticket. If you are, do not have a driver's license, you'll even go to your counselor and the counselor will do a verification form for you. So I just want to give you some tips when you pay to do it again. But I highly recommend that you pay to take the ACT again because it takes away that anxiety. And if you get more than one score of the ACT, they do a super score and they take all your best scores every time you take it and average that together. And colleges accept super scores. Does test anxiety affect the math score performance of a student? ACT research says that every student is nervous when they take the math test, but anxiety does not predict your score because every child's nervous. They all want to do their best. So studying and practicing a test is what makes a difference. Studying and practicing makes a difference and it makes you less anxious because you know the directions, you know the format. So we will be taking the test either the 8th, 9th, or 10th how long before a student is going to know their test results? It's usually six or eight weeks. 
if you have get on the website and on the portal, you can kind of check to see if you, to get your scores earlier before you get a letter in the mail, but it's usually six to eight weeks. So go ahead and pay now to take the test again because you can take the ACT in April, in June, in July. Now, some juniors may not be looking to go to college right now. It's not on the radar for them for one or another reason, maybe they're going to whatever they're gonna do. What, what would you suggest to them? Because I've heard parents say, well, he does need to take the test. He's not gonna go, you know, What's your feeling about that? Your ACT sc score stays with you for the rest of your life. So you may think, kids may say, Ms. Feast, I'm not going to college. Guess what? You may change your mind four years from now or when you're 25 or when you're 35, you may want to go to college and your ACT score is still there. Also, before all our Fayette County kids take the ACT, we're going to do an interest inventory. So the ACT sends out an interest inventory and maybe in a homeroom class, we're going to do it at school. So you'll be doing an interest in inventory. If you're a student, you get that in interest inventory back in a career and college suggestion. You In your printout with your scores that you get, it'll give you tips. It'll say, Judy, maybe you never thought about a career as a math teacher. Maybe you've never thought about a career in technology and in, or within television and it'll tell you that you would be great at that what's the act web account and why do we need one so let's take a look at some websites that would be important for the act people love our phones right so you're like miss feast how can i improve my score let's look at twitter i follow both of these and so ACT student, at ACT student, those send you, like you can follow their tweets. They give tips, highly recommend that. AC, uh, Kaplan, ACT, AC, SAT does the same thing. Get on Twitter and follow those. This is the website, Judy, you said we must know about. So parents and kids, this is where you wanna go. ACTstudent.org, go ahead and sign up. You need an email address, your name and a password. There's no cost. But that way you can get on the ACT website to practice test questions, acttestquestions.com. You log in as yourself and you can practice ACT questions. There's a question of the day. Isn't that great? So that, that you can just go in there and they have one, they publish every day one test question that you can just give and try. Another website, this is a good one. So if you wanna Google this at home, it's called fourtests.com. And I typed in four test ACT four test ACT and look for this website. There's four published ACT tests that you can take about 15 minutes and for questions, really worth your time. Finally, go see your school librarian. Your school librarian can hook you up with the Kentucky Virtual Library and they have free practice tests. So go see your librarian and say, hey, I heard there's free ACT tests on the Kentucky Virtual Library the librarians would love to tell you about those. Are, are, are there any other websites, uh, Natalie, for parents to work on at home? There are lots of good websites, but most that, that, that are the best are those that are from the ACT company. So I highly recommend the resources that are from the real ACT because that way you get practice with a real test. Well, you know, our. I hope that everybody check with your high school to make sure that you understand that March 8th, 9th, and 10th are the dates for the ACT this year. Check with your local high school on here in Fayette County. And I want to thank Natalie, who always does such a great job putting this together. And we want to thank STEAM Academy for having us today. This is a beautiful new school on Georgetown Road here in Lexington, Kentucky. And we want to thank Dr. Chris Flores, who is the principal here. Thank you for letting us come in enjoy your beautiful school. We could sit here all afternoon. It's just lovely. Remember our philosophy with homemade math is that parents can build a bridge between the math their children do at, at, in school and what they do at home. But mostly have fun with math and know that everything that you do encourages and promotes math does make a difference. And uh, don't forget one other thing, to bring your pencil. And I would be amiss if I didn't take a moment to thank our wonderful team today. Without them, we couldn't do this show. To Robert Lewis, Linda Daher, and to our newest team member, Carrington Walker, thank you so much. And thank you, friends, for watching Homemade Math, ACT edition. We'll see you in the spring. <laughs>